Hi, I'm Gina. Today, I'm going to be walking you through the two ways of applying actions in your AIP logic functions. So the first way is to give your action as a tool to the UDLLM block. Now, the second approach is to just use the apply actions block itself. In this video, I'm going to be going through the ins and outs of each approach and why you would use one or the other. Before we get started, a quick word from our founder. Discover how Palantir customers unlock more value from Foundry and AIP thanks to our live instructor-led trainings. We are Ontologize, a group of former Palantir engineers who love teaching. We've trained thousands of Palantir users at leading organizations around the world. Unlock the full potential of your Palantir deployment by going to ontologize.com. Starting from anywhere in Foundry, because we're going to be exploring taking actions today, we're going to need an action type. And in order to have an action type, we're going to have to have an object type. So to make sure that we're all starting on the same page, we're going to quickly make an object type with an associated action type. So starting from here or from wherever you are in Foundry, we're going to hit Control J and search for Ontology Manager. Now, we're not going to be needing any data here because we're going to be making a object type that is backed by an empty data set. And all of the records in this data set are going to be created by user write back. So now from here, you're going to go to new object type. And here, we're going to continue without a data source. Now, even though we're continuing without a data source, a data set will be generated for us for permissions purposes. And so here, we're going to select folder and call this something like alerts backing data set. And we're going to hit browse, pop into your learning project or whatever project you're using to save your work. Maybe even add a new folder here. And now we're going to hit save. So here we have our generated backing data set. And now we're going to hit next. And so I'm going to go ahead and call this Gina. And you should prefix it with your name. Alert. All right, so on an icon that suggests alert, little exclamation point, maybe make it um, red or rose or vermilion in this case. So here, we're going to keep it really simple. And we're going to add the minimal number of properties. So here, the primary key is going to be our auto-generated primary key property. The title key, in this case, will also be our primary key, just for simplicity. Now let's add two more properties. That is all we're going to need. So first, let's add alert description and then priority. And those are all we're going to need for now. And now ordinarily, you'd probably want to have some metadata on here, like submitted at, submitted by. But that's not critical for this demonstration. So we're going to skip it for now. So now we're going to hit next. In here, you'll see that this is going to auto-generate actions for us. That's fine. We can keep all these checked. And now we're going to hit Create. Now we've created our object type and our associated action types. Let's take a look at what we have. So you'll see we have these three properties that's expected. Now let's just take a quick look at our create action just to make sure it looks like we think it should. So we're going to click on it, create Gina alert. And you'll see here the rule is that it creates an alert. And that alert has a description and a priority and, of course, a primary key. Now that primary key is populated by a random unique identifier, which means our users do not need to touch this. And on the parameters, you'll see that there are just two fields for our users or AIP logic to deal with. And so that's really all we're going to do for now. Now that we've created our object types and our action types, let's hop over to AIP logic. Now, before we move on to AIP logic, make sure to save your work and then hit save to ontology and save changes. So from here, you're going to hit control J and search for AIP logic. Now you're going to click on AIP logic. And now we're going to hit new logic. And I'm going to call this AIP alert maker. And now we're going to hit browse, save it in the right folder. Actions in AIP logic. And then hit save. 
So here we are in AIP logic. Now in this case, what our function is going to do is it's gonna take in a user report of some sort of thing that's going on and then create an instance of the alert object type. So here, we're gonna hit add function inputs. And this is gonna be called user report. Now let's try the first mode of interacting with actions in AIP logic, which is to give it to an LLM as a tool. So here, we're gonna hit use LLM, and let's call this assign severity and generate alert. So here's the deal. So here, we're gonna take in a user report, and then if the LLM decides that it's actually worth creating an alert object over, then it's gonna create it. Now, if it doesn't, it's not gonna do anything. So here, the system prompt is going to be something like, you are responsible for triaging and creating alerts based on user reported issues. Only triage and create the alert if it seems like a real issue worthy of an alert. Okay, so there's our system prompt. Now, of course, it's a little subjective. What is worthy of an alert? In reality, you might wanna use some sort of RAG workflow and look at some sort of company documentation to figure out what constitutes a real problem. Now, in this case, we're keeping it very simple, not doing any RAG here. So that's the system prompt, that's our job description. Now, the task prompt, the input data is going to be the user reported issue. And then it's going to be the user report. Okay, before we add an action tool in here, let's just see what this does. So here, the user report is going to be, um, I can't find my other sock. So probably not a real issue. Now we're gonna hit preview run. Okay, so it says, this does not require an alert. All right, let's try something else. Um, my air conditioner fell out of my uh, 10 story window. How about that? Now we're gonna hit preview run. Okay, so this is warranting an alert. Now, of course, we're not creating any alerts yet. I just wanted to demonstrate what the function is doing before we add in additional complexity by adding a tool. Now, the entire point of this is to create an alert. So now let's give the use LLM block a tool, which is going to allow it to actually create instances of the alert object type in the ontology. So now we're gonna hit add tool. You're going to search for create in your name here instead of mine. Gina alert. And here you're gonna hit add tool, apply actions. And here you should see your actions at the top. If you don't just search for create and then your name alert. There we go. So now you're gonna hit that. And so here we have our tool. Now we're gonna have to give a couple of additional instructions for how to use this tool. Because remember, our action has two fields that actually matter here. So one is the severity and the other is the description. And so here, let's add some explanation in our system prompt for how to actually fill out this action. When creating an alert, if it is warranted, put the user reported issue as the alert description. For the priority, decide a priority of either low, medium, or critical. So now let's take it for a spin. So here, the user report Let's try something like every pipe 
in my building has burst. They have it. This is just an example. Now let's hit preview run and see what's going on. Okay, so here we can see the function output. Now, first of all, let's take a look at what we're seeing here. We're gonna see some proposed ontology edits. And remember, ontology edits are not applied when you're running your functions in AIP logic when you're building them. So this is really more of a staging area. But we can see that if it would have actually run in the wild or in production, it would have made an ontology edit. And so here, if we hover over this, we can see an alert that has a description. Every pipe in my building has burst and the priority is critical. Sounds about right. Now let's try something else, something that's kind of a non-issue. Let's say my lunch delivery was one minute late. And now let's hit preview run and see what it does. So here we can see that there are no ontology edits being applied here. And so that is because this is really a non-issue. This probably does not warrant creating an alert. Now, again, we can see that no ontology edits were applied here. And if we want to understand why, if I expand this here, let's look at the chain of thoughts. So we have the LLM output, so we have the intermediate. So assess the severity of the issue reported by the user. Determine if the issue warrants creating an alert based on its impact and urgency. Since the issue is about a lunch delivery being one minute late, evaluate if this is a significant problem that requires further action. Now we see the final answer. So the issue of a lunch delivery being one minute late is not significant enough to warrant creating an alert. It is a minor inconvenience and does not require further action. So that seems sound to me. Now what you may be observing here is that when we give an action as a tool to the use LLM block, that action may or may not get applied depending on the instructions we give on the prompt on how to actually use that action. And so here, you would want to give the use LLM block an action as a tool if you don't always want that action applied and if you want some sort of LLM coordinated judgment on whether that action should be applied. So that is our first mode of operation. Now, the second mode of operation is to just use the apply action block. Now, that's a little bit simpler here. So, let's modify what we have here. Now here, we're gonna rewrite the LLM prompt a little bit. We already have the use LLM block here, so we're just gonna use it anyway to evaluate the severity of the alert. But we're gonna modify the prompt pretty heavily. So again, when you're using the separate apply action block, you really don't need to use an LLM with it at all, unless you really want to. Here we are because we have this alert priority and we have to figure it out somehow. So let's delete this and say, you are responsible for prioritizing user reported issues as either low, medium, or critical priority. Return no explanation. Okay, so there we have our system prompt. The input data is the same. Let's get rid of that tool, because again, the point of this is right now, we're not gonna be using the tool anymore. We're applying our actions in a different way. So get rid of that. And note here that we're recommending single completion now because we don't have a tool. And if we don't have a tool, then we're allowed to use single completion, which can be a little faster. We can keep it as chain of thought for now. It's not gonna be a big deal. So now what we're going to do is we're gonna search for all blocks. And you'll see here that we have the ability to apply an action as its own block. Now, the quickest way to do this, in my experience, is to just search for the name of your action. So remember, our actions are called something like create your name, so Gina, alert. Okay, so create Gina alert. Now, we have our create action block, which again is totally distinct from the use LLM block, right? These absolutely do not need to be used together. It just so happens we already had a use LLM block here and we're keeping it. 
So this is the apply action block. And so here, when we use the apply action block, you'll notice that it kind of looks like the form that you see when you're developing an action in Ontology Manager. Now, the values in this form are going to be filled out either by values that you derive over the course of the AIP logic function run or things that are coming directly from user inputs. So let's go through this. So for the priority, let's actually rename this use LLM block to just determine priority because now it's not actually doing anything. And so the output of this block is just going to be low, medium, or critical. So the priority of the alert that we're creating should be the output from that LLM block. So if I click priority here, it's going to be determine priority. And you'll see also here that now the use LLM block is not claiming this unused because now its response is being used here. Now the alert description is just going to be the user report. So we're just going to feed that straight through to that field in the apply action form. So the alert description is going to be user report. All right, now let's try it out. So let's try with the same function input that we were playing with before. So my lunch delivery was one minute late. So we're going to hit preview run. You'll see here that ontology edits were indeed proposed, even though this is a trivial issue, probably not worthy of an alert. So the thing about this apply action block is it's going to get carried out no matter what. All right. So again, in this case, even though the reported issue is not really worthy of an alert, we got one anyway. And you'll see also in these proposed ontology edits, we have the description and the priority, so low priority. And then again, if the user report is something like everything is on fire and I hit preview run, you'll see that this is a critical priority issue, correct? Um, and that it was also created. So again, the difference is that there's some discretion as to when your actions get applied here. Whereas this one, it's going to get carried out no matter what. And edits are always going to be applied. Now, what these two approaches have in common is they both give you a function that applies ontology edits, which means that after you publish this function, you can use it to say, back in action or run it as part of an automate workflow. Make sure to save and publish. Before you publish, make sure you bind to an ontology and then hit publish again. And that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching. We hope you found this helpful. Let us know what you want to see next in the comments.